In this video, I'll be setting up a Tent TP Sapphire 9 CP. Now one of the first questions I had was, if you bought an inner tent like I did, do you need to set it up first? And the answer is no. Now these steel stakes didn't come with the tent, but I highly recommend getting them because your alternative is aluminum. And you can't hammer aluminum because it could bend or break. In here, I keep the measuring cord. You simply put the loop around the stake. And as you can see, there's different numbers that correspond to the different sizes of TP tents. With the pole plate and the measuring cord, you can easily and accurately place your stakes. And right now, I'm just lightly pressing them in perpendicular to the ground because I plan to pull them out later and reinstall them. And I'll show you why in a bit. When you unroll and unfold the tent, the bottom side will be facing up towards the sky. So right here, I'm just flipping it over, right side up. Now a mistake you might want to make is you might want to attach this loop to the stake. Don't do that. You're supposed to stake it through these metal rings. And you'll notice that these rings don't fit over the heads of the stakes. So you take them out, put them through the ring, and reinsert the stake at a 45 degree angle and then hammer it in or use your foot. Then you go ahead and proceed to stake down all eight points on the tent. Next you unzip the door. Now I'm going to show you how the very top of the tent is constructed. With the door zipped open, it's easy to walk right up to it. The top is comprised of two pieces. The first piece covers the mosquito net on the second piece and is attached to the second piece right here. Now if you're going to use the teepee tent with a wood-burning stove, you must open this up because that's where the chimney goes. And if you lift up the fabric of the second piece, you can see where the tent pole goes. It goes right in there. It inserts right up into the conical mosquito net, which sits right above the chimney opening. Below the two top pieces is the main body of the tent, which has a big opening at the top and some netting. And the chimney goes through this hole and through the second piece. Now the second piece raises up and down with the bungee cord system to control airflow. And the netting is there to keep mosquitoes out. There's a draw cord which you pull to cinch it tightly around the pole. But of course we don't want to do that. We want to leave it open for use with the chimney. And not only that, we don't want to leave it hanging down because if it makes contact with the chimney, it could possibly melt or even catch on fire. And to do that, you simply roll it up and secure it to the side with the included attachments. Now I'm using a step ladder to do this. And if you don't plan on bringing a step ladder with you out into the wilderness, then you'd, be then you'd better do this before you hoist the tent. And by the way, this is the inner tent, and it has the same mosquito netting system as the outer tent. And it too needs to be rolled up and out of the way for use with the stove. And right now, before you hoist it, is a good time to do that. Tent TP added the convenience of bungee cord to keep the five pole segments together. Once the tent pole's in place, you must tighten each strap to make it secure. 
As a word of caution, it's possible for the very top piece to dangle to the side when hoisting the tent, leaving an open space at the top. Now, there is the mosquito net in place, but still, if you want to keep air from escaping out the top, you want that top piece to be securely over the pole before hoisting the tent up. So to correct that mistake, you have to take down the tent and secure the very top piece to the pole with one hand while hoisting the tent with the other hand. Do you see the pole and how it's at an angle like that? Uh, the question was, is it okay to set up this tent on a slight incline? And the answer to that is, if you can avoid it, do avoid it um, as much as possible. But if you can't avoid it, is it better to tighten the straps on the upside of the hill more to try to hoist the pole up while making the straps on the downside of the hill looser, looser, tighter, hoist it up, or do you want to leave it at an angle? That's something maybe you research on your own, but I would guess you want to leave it perpendicular to the slope of the hill. Okay, now I'm going to explain something about the straps. As you can see, this is the stake. This is the metal ring that goes around the stake. Uh, these are loose when you hoist the tent. After the tent's hoisted, you pull on them. The, these metal clips uh, grip this material really, really well. These are high quality metal clips. Now, the bottom's kind of loose. And then there's this thing. So what do you do with this? This is called the storm flap. This whole green area is the storm flap. You have the option of leaving this out or folding it under. The question might be, do you put this on the same stake as that? No, it comes with separate stakes and you can stake this <clears throat> right here. Do not make the mistake of putting this on there. It won't reach, um, it just won't reach. So why would you use this on the outside? You only use this on the outside if you're camping in heavy snow. And the reason for that is when you shake the tent, all the snow will slide outward and make a nice barrier against wind. Uh, any other time, it's advisable to fold it underneath the tent. And we'll go inside and I'll show you the detail there in a minute. Now this is kind of loose. There's a tightening strap right here. You pull it and it makes this nice and tight. Really good design. Now, I'm going to install the inner tent, so I want this loose, so I can attach the inner tent easily, and then once it's attached, I'm going to go around the outside and pull all these tight once again, and tighten up the inner tent. So, leave this loose for now, leave this folded under, and uh, yeah, now. Here's the view from the inside. I'm going to go ahead and stake it down. And the reason you want to stake down the storm flap is it keeps strong winds from entering the tent and making you cold. So you've got these two features right here. This plastic thing clips into the ring to take out the slack. Now this ring right here is for attaching either a tent floor or an inner tent. If you're going to use an inner tent, you don't need a tent floor because it has its own, and its floor is sewn directly into it. So at each anchoring point, the inner tent first attaches to this ring, and then moving up here, it attaches to this one. And finally, it attaches to this one up here. And in the middle of each side, the storm flaps have an additional ring for staking them down. Of course, this is your vent with a mosquito net to help uh, let air in the summertime. It seems to be Velcroed shut from the outside. Now it's time to talk about the regulating tube and where you should keep it when using the stove. The regulating tube holds the six cords that control the vents at the top of the teepee and keeps them organized and all together. When you want to open the top, you, you go like that. That opens, opens and shuts the top. Open and shut. And when you want it to be open, you just lock it in place like that. There's a bungee. So if I let go, it snaps shut. See, I let go, it snaps shut. It's a bungee cord. That's how that works. 
two chords control the two sides of the very top piece, while the other four chords control the four quadrants of this piece. The purpose of the very top piece is to allow ventilation while it's raining. It can be opened and rain can't get in, whereas the bottom piece will let rain in. This whole thing will detach from here and it swings down and all your draw cords are there. And using the chimney, you don't want it to be right next to the stove because it could melt. So you got to clip it here, keep it out of the way. It should be noted, however, that if you plan on using the inner tent, you'll have to unzip one of the vents of the inner tent and reach your hand through it to be able to access the regulating tube. If you change your mind and don't care about running the risk of damaging the regulating tube or possibly burning it, you can always detach it from the outer tent and pull it through to the inside of the inner tent and attach it to the tent pole if you have a step ladder. With the three preparations made for using the wood burning stove, that being the mosquito net rolled up and out of the way, the chimney hole being pulled apart open, and the regulating tube secured to the side of the tent, it's time to set up the inner tent. As you saw earlier in the video, there's a big opening at the top of the inner tent. It does not attach to the center pole. Additionally, now's the time you want to roll up the mosquito net on the inner tent unless you don't plan on using the wood burning stove. The next step is to lift up the tent pole and place it inside of the opening at the top of the inner tent. But before you can do that, you must loosen the anchor straps. There's one long continuous zipper that starts at the top of the door and continues all the way to the middle of the floor. And that zipper has four slides on it. And if you unzip the floor incorrectly, this is what it looks like. To fix the mistake, you can either unzip it correctly in the first place, leaving the four slides at the top of the door, or loosen the anchor straps and lift up the tent pole and place it on the other side of the slides. And if you forgot to install the end cap that the regulating tube attaches to, now is a good time to do that as well before you retighten the anchoring straps. Okay, back to the present. With the anchoring straps loose, it's now easy to lift up the tent pole and place it inside of the inner tent. And now it's time to retighten the anchoring straps. The next step is to clip the inner tent to the outer tent. And I'm starting with the bottom and middle rings first. And it's best to start on one side and work your way around to the other side so you don't get stuck at the back of the tent. Here's a close-up of what that looks like. Well, you might not bring a step ladder with you when camping, so you might want to attach the top of the inner tent first before hoisting the outer tent. This is how each of the eight clips should look. Ring A is where the inner tent actually attaches to the outer tent. Ring B just serves as a link in the chain, and ring C exists so that you can attach a circular drying rail to it. The drying rail is sold as an accessory. And now is a good time to point out that you don't want to tighten the anchoring straps too tightly because it puts too much stress on the strap that attaches to ring A as well as the rest of the stitching and the zippers. You don't want it to look as pretty as it does in this picture. You actually want to leave it a little bit baggy because not only is it easier on the stitching and the zippers, but it actually allows the tent to handle high winds better. I haven't quite figured out how I want the zippers, but so far I like the idea of keeping uh, all four slides at the top of the door. And this way, there's nothing in the way to prevent me from peeling this back. And I'll keep the tent stove right here on the ground instead of hovering over the uh, plastic floor. <laughs> 